Well, everybody, welcome to the Power Is Now Fair Housing Series 2023. My name is Eric Frazier. The Power Is Now began this journey of talking about the 1968 Fair Housing Series three years ago. This is our third year, and I'm excited about it. We've invited industry leaders and housing and real estate and banking and finance to talk about the importance of this act. It passed April 11th, 1968, signed into law by President Lyndon B. Johnson after a very contentious uh, debate in the Senate. Uh, it was finally passed by the House of Representatives shortly thereafter the death of uh, Martin Luther King. And many believe if it wasn't for the death of Dr. King, the law may not be in existence today. So thank God that it is. And it is a testament to Dr. King's efforts to bring about civil rights. Now, the 1964 Civil Rights Act uh, really laid the foundation uh, to the 1968 Fair Housing Act, as well as the 1965 Voting, right Act, Voting Rights Act and further laws that have been put into place. We do need laws to you know, protect us from ourselves and to give those who are considered the least among us, the minorities, if you will, a voice in this great society. In this series, we are examining the role of the 1968 Fair Housing Act. Is it achieving its goals intended by the legislators? Uh, are we seeing an impact uh, by the law on the behavior of real estate professionals and consumers uh, and builders and industry leaders uh, and bankers and everyone else who is directly impacted by the law. Are we seeing an impact? Well, if you measure the law success by the rate of homeownership for African-Americans, you may wanna question the effectiveness of the law. In 1968, the homeownership rate was 41%. Today, in 2023, it's 45 and so there's been a marginal, if not, you know, inconsequential increase uh, to the rate of homeownership. And we are still seeing uh, problems uh, with the access to credit, access to housing, unfair treatment by real estate professionals and bankers. And so there's still a lot of work to be done. Welcome Gabe Del Rio, president of the Homeownership Council of America to the Fair Housing Series 2023. Thanks for having me, Eric. Gabe, it is a pleasure always to have you on this series. You always bring great information and also solutions to some of the challenges that the 1968 Fair Housing Act uh, brings in its implementation and its enforcement. Now, I wanna get into all those details with you, uh, but before we do, as you know, we have a tradition on this show where we ask every guest a question. What does the phrase, the power is now, mean to you in the context of fair housing and what you do professionally. Well, you know, we, we've, um, we've talked about this before and um, I particularly think of uh, communities of color and I think of uh, the, the power to change the scenario, the power to change circumstance, the power to move forward and uh, and I, you know, and, and I, of course, think of that in the context of home ownership because that's the greatest wealth building vehicle uh, for individuals. And also because we have such massive home ownership gaps among the races and ethnicities, how important that is. But why the now portion is, I think, especially meaningful. You know, last year at this time, we had talked about. Uh, the, the uh, SPCP toolkit that was just coming to market. And we were just off the heels of having some regulatory guidance that allowed uh, programs that are racially targeted with incentives and, and assistance um, for mortgage lending. And since then, here we are a year later, we estimate there are over 30 mortgage products out there. We have some of the biggest banks uh, in the country having these programs. We have independent mortgage banks with these programs, and we have Fannie and Freddie uh, in pilot for them. So these, you know, where I was excited last year about the power being now that we're finally paying attention to this, 
in the industry and that people had woken, uh, woken up about this issue and decided to really do something about it proactively. Uh, you know, here we are a year later and we have made measurable progress. At the same time, though, we looked at the Humda data and, uh, and you know, uh, BIPOC lending is down significantly in 2022. So it's even more important that we get more of these special purpose programs out there and that more BIPOC uh, home buyers are able to access these programs because in today's rate environment, you need some discounts, you need some down payment assistance in order to make it work. And the power is now to engage and, and, and to learn about these programs and for financial institutions to get involved. Do you agree? Absolutely. Gabe, thank you so much again for your Power Is Now statement and for being with us today. Uh, I want to uh, give you an opportunity to explain uh, what exactly is the Homeownership Council of America. And you've touched on in your Power Is Now statement a couple of uh, acronyms that many of our listeners and viewers may not understand, uh, special purpose credit programs and BIPOC. And so let's start first at the high level. You're the president and CEO of uh, the Homeownership Council of America. What is your role there? What does your organization do? Well, we're a mission-based organization, obviously focused on homeownership. So we're a 501c3, a national nonprofit. We operate uh, primarily through our social enterprise, which is called Community Lending Initiatives and Mortgage Banking, or CLIMB. And in the CLIMB program, we work with both nonprofits and for-profits, building affordable and racial equity loan programs, pro uh, also delivery systems, as we call them, where we're setting up partnerships that go from secondary market uh, to lenders, lenders to nonprofits, nonprofits to the community. And so all working together and all having a, an organized delivery system to provide access to credit to underserved communities. And so that's our primary uh, uh, program. We, you know, some examples of that, we have helped lots of nonprofits to build mortgage brokerage um, functions so that they can earn extra revenue to more deeply serve their mission. And also because many of their clients are not as well uh, taken care of by the financial services industry. And so this allows them to step in and uh, provide that origination role and still access loans provided by large lenders on wholesale lines. Um, for the for-profit groups, we've helped to make CRA mortgage products, down payment assistance programs, and most uh, recently, as you mentioned, SPCP's special purpose credit programs which are uh, programs that are either targeted to people or geographies, but in all cases, they are targeted to what, it, what ECOA, the, uh, the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, refers to as economically disadvantaged classes of people. And so these are targeted to uh, high minority census tracts and directly to minority populations. In, in essence, these programs allow you to uh, discriminate on this provision of that product based on uh, that eligibility. And while there are not that many that base it on your race or ethnicity, because they're a bit, you know, a bit weary of that, um, they do base it on geography where we can prove that the predominance of people that are moving to or from that geography are in fact BIPOC. Um, so that gets me to my BIPOC term. Um, so BIPOC is uh, Black, Indigenous, People of Color. It is a very imperfect um, new acronym that is meant to, um, to encompass all of what you would otherwise refer to as minorities. And so these would be all races and ethnicities that are not non-Hispanic white, okay? And so that BIPOC is meant to be this all-encompassing group. And also the reason we utilize the word, we're clearly not the only ones, it's, a, it's, it's proliferated the, the industry, um, but where I uh, personally agree with it is that it's not diminutive. So the word minority in and of itself means outnumbered and less than. And I don't think it's a good starting point for how to talk to people. And so, um, and so that's why we, um, we use the term BIPOC and we continue to you know, teach people about the term and, and see it getting used all over. 
Um, like I said, it's imperfect. I, I welcome a, a better acronym, but something that's not minority. Uh, Dave, wow, you guys do a lot. And that term minority, that's the first time I've ever heard anyone refer to minorities. And 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 to really look at what it means, you know, uh, outnumbered and less than, and that that isn't a way to start a conversation. So right. uh, I, I appreciate the BIPOC term even more now. So uh, thank you for sharing that. What else is your organization up to? So we're really proud to have launched our equity programs. This is uh, something that we've been able to support through the social enterprise. And that encompasses a few different things. We are, uh, we, we've built a down payment assistance product that we piloted. And um, in fact, we were able to work with one of your buyers, Eric, and uh, make a video that you can now see on uh, realtor.com forward slash fair housing. And there's a couple of videos there from equity DPA borrowers. What we did was we were uh, demonstrating that a nonprofit can host a national down payment assistance solution, which had not been done before. Most nonprofits are focused regionally or locally. And so we unlocked the, um, the sort of uh, back end of how you would operationalize the down payment assistance in all 50 states. And so we unlocked that. And when we did, we wanted to make a program that also demonstrated the importance of special purpose credit programs. So we made the down payment assistance program a special purpose product. It does help the traditional low to moderate income, sort of any buyer, but, um, but that is restricted to 80% of the median income, as is most of down payment assistance that you'll find out there, restricted to low income people or low income areas. And that is uh, an equation that's more difficult to solve for today. So, um, and when you look at the mortgage ready population of the BIPOC population that's mortgage ready, this is not a predominantly low income population. So it's really important to have products and programs that are providing assistance, right? Oftentimes a BIPOC home buyer, you know, two thirds of the time is a first generation home buyer. And so they don't have mom, dad, aunt, uncle, grandma, grandpa to call and say, could you give me an extra 10,000 please towards my first home? They just don't have that, right? So there's a need for this assistance, but it can't be tied to low income status. And that really brings in special purpose credit because we can target people and not income. And, um, and so our program goes up to 200% of the area median income, which really just says that a wide range of income earners who still are the first time home buyer, they're still often first generation in their family, uh, they need that little bit of boost. And so and that program, we've piloted it, demonstrated it. Uh, where we're going next in that is we're actually roping you into um, to our Equity Advisory Council. And we will be announcing in June, and I, I hope you'll have me back for the big public announcement of what's next for the equity brand and the equity logo. I would just say that uh, what we're doing is pulling together partners that will help to connect communities of color with these programs and products. The, the industry's having a difficult time talking about the fact that we have 30 companies out there at least with a mortgage program that's directed towards people of color, right? And so, and people are having a hard time with that conversation. We really wanna facilitate the connection because there are great programs, there's incentives, discounts, assistance, you name it. And we wanna get those in the hands of the people who it's intended for. For those of you just joining us, we're talking to Gabe Del Rio. He is the president and CEO of the Homeownership Council of America. He's here to lead the conversation with the powers now about the 1968 Fair Housing Act. So far, we have learned about his organization and the great work they are doing. Now let's get into the 1968 Fair Housing Act and other strategies that may be available to those who are seeking to home, own a home uh, and to be treated fairly in the process. You're listening to or watching The Power Is Now 2023 Fair Housing Series. We'll be right back right after this commercial break. The Power Is Now magazines are the leading resource for real estate agents, mortgage bankers, entrepreneurs, and small home ownership businesses, providing leaders with business strategy information, resources, and tools through PIN, Real Estate, Programming Guide magazines, 
Stay up to the minute with real estate news and information from industry experts. Subscription is free. Sign up today. Thepowersnow.com. Thepowersnow.com.